Have you ever heard of a trial where the accused is a corpse? Sounds absurd, doesn't it? But it happened. Welcome to one of the most bizarre chapters in history, a curious tale spun in the heart of 9th century Rome under the illustrious roof of the Basilica of St. John Lateran. Brace yourself as we delve into the story of the Cadaver Synod, a narrative that stretches the boundaries of our understanding of faith, power and the extent of human vendettas. Our tale begins with Pope Stephen VI, a man whose ambition was only matched by his disdain for his predecessor, Pope Formosus. Stephen was not just driven by political rivalry, but also a personal vendetta so potent it would lead him to make a decision that would cast a long dark shadow over the annals of the Catholic Church. He ordered the exhumation of Pope Formosus, who had been dead for nearly nine months. An odd request, isn't it? To understand this, we must journey back to the tumultuous and politically charged atmosphere of 9th century Rome. Pope Formosus, during his reign, managed to create a veritable army of enemies, Stephen VI being one of the most formidable. After Formosus's death, Stephen ascended to the papacy and, in a bid to cement his position, sought to discredit Formosus even in death. The stage was thus set for the Cadaver Synod, an ecclesiastical trial that would make the annals of history for its sheer audacity and grimness. The deceased Pope was dressed in his papal vestments, seated on a throne and made to stand trial, with a deacon appointed to speak on behalf of the corpse. The charges, perjury serving as a bishop, while a layman, and attempting to hold office in different dioceses simultaneously. As outrageous as it sounds, this trial was conducted with all the solemnity of a high ecclesiastical court. And so the stage was set for one of the most surreal trials in history, the Cadaver Synod. Imagine the scene, a dead Pope propped up on a throne facing serious accusations. It's a sight that challenges belief, but it, it's a story grounded in reality. In a macabre display of rivalry and revenge, Pope Stephen VI leveled severe charges against the corpse of his predecessor, Pope Formosus. The accusations were severe and shocking, especially given the defendant's inability to respond. Formosus was accused of perjury, breaking church law by serving as a bishop while actually a layman, and attempting to hold office in different dioceses simultaneously. Now, if you think this sounds like the script of a dark medieval drama, you wouldn't be wrong. But the gravity of these charges was taken very seriously in the 9th century ecclesiastical court. Just as in any trial, there was a prosecution, a defense, and a judge. However, the defense in this case was a deacon appointed to speak on behalf of the lifeless Formosus. The trial was conducted with all the decorum and solemnity of a high ecclesiastical court, despite the palpable absurdity of the situation. The courtroom was filled with church officials and curious onlookers, all watching in a mix of disbelief and horror as the trial proceeded. As one might expect, the outcome was a foregone conclusion. The corpse naturally offered no defense. The guilty verdict was delivered, and the punishments were as severe as they were symbolic. The papal vestments were stripped from the body of Formosus, the three fingers he used for blessings were cut off, and his papacy was declared null. But the indignities didn't end there. The body of Formosus was reburied in a graveyard for foreigners, only to be exhumed and tossed into the Tiber River by supporters later on. The trial concluded, and the punishments were as harsh as they were symbolic. But this was not the end of the story. It was merely the prelude to a backlash that would change the course of history and leave a lasting mark on the Catholic Church. In the aftermath of the Cadaver Synod, Rome was in shock and the repercussions were swift. The people of Rome, horrified by the spectacle, turned their backs on Stephen VI. His audacious act of desecration did not go unpunished. The tide of public opinion turned against him and he was soon overthrown, imprisoned and eventually met a gruesome end. His fate underscored the volatile nature of medieval Rome, a city where power could shift as quickly as the winds of the Tiber River. The fate of Pope Formosus' corpse was equally dramatic. Initially buried in a graveyard for foreigners, it was later exhumed by Formosus' supporters who couldn't bear to see their Pope laid to rest in such a lowly place. They tossed his body into the Tiber River, a final act of defiance against the man who had sought to erase Formosus' legacy. But the Cadaver Synod is not remembered just for its macabre theatrics. Its legacy lies in the questions it raises about the intersection of power, religion and personal vendettas. It forces us to confront unsettling truths about the lengths to which people will go to attain and maintain power and the ways in which they will manipulate even the sacred for their own ends.
This event also highlights the dangers of mixing secular politics with spiritual authority. Stephen VI's desperation to legitimize his papacy led him down a path that ultimately resulted in his downfall. His story serves as a cautionary tale, a reminder of the potential pitfalls of wielding spiritual authority for political gain. The Cadaver Synod, a macabre event in history, serves as a stark reminder of the complexities of power, the dangers of mixing secular politics with spiritual authority and the depths of human folly. It's a tale that, despite being over a thousand years old, continues to resonate today. It's a reminder that history can, at times, be stranger than fiction, and that the past, no matter how dark, always has lessons to teach us.